I think if you exist online by this point, and particularly if you're a woman who exists online by this point, you might have come across people asking you really strange kind of TMI questions. But you think to yourself, why would anybody possibly want to know why my belly button is an innie or an outie? It doesn't seem like it's that harmful if I do answer it, but also, why do they want to know? I get asked questions like this all the time, and I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I think it's something which I like to call fetish mining. And the reason why I bring it up is because I was doing a little Q&A about my new channel, Ginger, by Becky, here on YouTube. Subscribe, ring the bell. <laughs> I received a question, is your belly button an innie or an outie? And I've had this question asked before. Also, my friends have had this question asked before by the same account, which is, basically like an account that looks like a Disney fan account run by a young girl, but all their posts are about like belly buttons. The account's on private, but I remember snooping it ages ago when it wasn't on private and it was just, it was just a mixture of like Disney stuff and then belly button related content. And I just thought it was time that we had this conversation because I know that I'm not the only one going through this and I know that so many of my friends, so many of my peers and so many people who just use the internet are going through this. And the worst thing is sometimes you don't realise that it's happening to you until it's too late and you've already given them what they want. But what is fetish mining? Fetish mining is when people interact with you, ask you questions, essentially try and manoeuvre you, manipulate manipulate you into participating in their fetish unwittingly. Might I preface this by saying this isn't about kink shaming. Honestly, do what you want as long as you're not hurting anybody. Fine with me, I don't care. You do you. But one of the number one rules about any kind of kink anywhere is consent. And this is completely against that because this is about trying to get people to participate without having informed consent. I'm gonna explain to you a little bit more about the belly button question and why it's so concerning that it's coming from this specific account. And then I'm gonna give you some more examples of other questions that I've been asked and other people that I know have been asked that are so clearly this is the intention and the intent. Asking me whether my belly button is an innie or an outie is concerning, not because of the question, because to be honest, I don't actually really care if people know that about me or not, but with the intent behind this question, I do care because I don't want to participate in this person's like weird fantasy or whatever. First of all, how can you tell what somebody's intentions are when you're being asked these kinds of questions? Because obviously it's difficult, especially difficult on the internet to read nuance into anything because we all type with the same font. We can't read intonation. I always say go with your gut feeling and as somebody who gets a lot of these kinds of questions I kind of like have figured out how to weed them out just based on my intuition because I feel like I'm quite a good judge of character. When I talked about this on Twitter somebody raised the point this is kind of like the questions that you might ask your friends at a sleepover do you know what I mean and that's kind of what makes it all the more insidious. Another user raised this exact point and said what if it was a little kid asking this if it's a fetish thing that's no good but little kids ask weird questions all the time and that's completely true. Again, Again, that's what makes it worse. For starters, my friend Connie said this, she joined in on the thread, she said, a lot of the people who ask these questions will ask you in like a childish or a childlike tone to make it seem like it is a little kid who's asking this and to kind of throw you off your guard. Similarly, these accounts will also pose as children or young people or as girls, somebody unthreatening, unassuming. This particular belly button Disney account is posing like, thousands of other like Disney girl accounts that I've ever seen but they only seem to ask about belly buttons and nothing else and you would think that maybe a child would ask the question once and that would be it but when I've had this question from this one account multiple times my friends have had it multiple times their whole account focuses on this one thing I bet if I saw the messages they were sending to other people they all revolve around this one thing that's a little bit more than a kid's random question that's something targeted with a specific purpose and the other reason why this is so bad is because not to toot my own horn but I've grown up with a fairly considerable social media following I am used to having a lot of people following me a lot of people engaging with me asking me questions left right and center and that's fine because I already am comfortable with the resolve that I don't have to answer every single question if one's a bit weird or makes me uncomfortable I can just ignore it but when these people target regular citizens of the internet who maybe have got 40 followers and they're all from their school or something and then they get one like random anonymous question asking them about their belly button since they're used to answering all the other questions that they get asked they're gonna answer this one as well especially if it's coming from an unassuming kind of like young girl looking account the kinds of questions that you'll get asked at a sleepover and that's where it gets all the more worse because that's where a lot of people don't realize that they're being targeted by these people to participate or create 
fodder or something, you know, be exploited essentially for this person's fetish. And that's what I've got a huge problem with. It's not all about belly buttons. Let me talk you through a few of my other experiences and experiences of my friends and my peers. Maybe the belly button won't resonate with you, but maybe some of these will and you'll realize, oh my God, that was actually something a bit more disturbing than I actually thought. So what's strange? Body parts are always a really big one for this. So not just belly buttons, but also armpits, ears, <laughs> noses, mouths, anything and everything. But most of all, feet. And it's frustrating because I get it. If you've got a niche fetish and it's hard to find content that's gonna satisfy, fulfill you, whatever, you can commission with your own money professionals to facilitate that for you but it is in no way acceptable to bring this to an unassuming person and exploit them for your personal gratification. And that's fine for all these niche ones, but one which is, you know, this is quite a common fetish is feet. And so to get random members of the public to participate in that fetish when there is so much like foot content that exists, it really baffles me. And that makes me think that maybe the whole idea of somebody not knowing that they're playing into it or being a part of it maybe that's part of what's getting them off in some way as well, which is even worse. But one of the feet messages that I got, because I get a lot to the point where I am really hesitant to post any pictures which involve my feet, even if they're wearing socks, especially if they're bare, I just won't post it. I used to do dance covers which were barefoot and they'd get loads of views because obviously they get posted on some weird little forum where everyone's like, oh, pulls it like this bit and there's like a great foot shot or something like that. And it's like, that's not what I'm doing. I was just dancing, you know? The intention wasn't to create this stuff and you've done this completely without my consent. But one of the feet people who was trying to get me to do this and this particular message and set of messages because they don't just message once they message more than once this particular one i got when i was quite young probably about 14 or 15 and i was really close to doing it before my gut instinct was like mm, maybe this isn't maybe this isn't it. So I used to always get these messages and it was basically like, hey Becky, um, I was wondering if you'd be interested in helping me with this charity campaign. What we want people to do is take a picture of like, imagine these are feet, of your bare feet facing the camera and on the bottom of your feet write Toms or something like that, or like Toes for Toms. And it was basically the shoe brand Toms trying to raise awareness for, I don't know, poverty, like something or other, like do something for charity, I'm not sure. And if you just post a picture with your feet saying like Toes for Toms, like this, facing the camera, and use the hashtag Toes for Toms, that'd be great. And I was like, oh, a bit for charity, doesn't seem like it's very high effort, I guess I could do that, fine. Um, but then I was like, something just didn't sit right with me. And I looked on the hashtag, and I just started doing a bit more research, and first of all, I couldn't find any official information from the brand Toms shoes about this weird little like draw on the bottom of your feet situation and by the way I was like 14 15 I didn't really know what a foot fetish was I didn't know that like feet could be interesting or appealing in that way it was not on my radar and obviously nowadays I know that but I'm 24 now this is like 10 years ago and children just don't often actually know why people might find these kinds of things unsavory I went on the hashtag and I saw there was like maybe like three posts of people who had actually done the Toes for Toms thing. And when I looked at the pictures, I was like, this is strange. Like something isn't quite right here. And so I just ignored the message and that was it. But like looking back, that was clearly fetish mining trying to get me to create like close up like foot pics for them under the guise of charity, which is so exploitative. Is and using so now the brand Tom's shoes, I'm actually a bit grossed out by and freaked out by just because so early in my mind was it associated with this like weird like foot thing that like made me just feel a bit uncomfortable. I'm sure they've never done anything bad, like I don't think that was an official campaign, but like it is weird. <laughs> and here's another message which exactly highlights what I was saying about they will use the guise or the image of like a young girl to alleviate your fears, especially if you yourself are a young girl. And this message is from somebody called like Sarah DSP or something like that. And it says, hi love, my name is Sarah and I would love your help in finishing a volunteer art project I'm creating to help simply submit a photo in the same pose as the promos on my blog. I don't post your pic on my blog unless you give me permission and it will only be used in a mural I'm creating called 10,000 Toes for Poverty, which will be donated towards raising money for children around the globe who go daily barefoot without shoes. It would be a huge help, thanks so much. Now like, on the surface, fine. 10,000 toes in your art mural for a project 
raising money for charity, they know every single buzzword to get people to be sympathetic to their cause and therefore participate, when actually the main sole purpose of, oh, sole, oh, pun, the sole purpose of that is just to create, manufacture, invite me to participate in their fetish without me knowing. It's absolutely out of order. What about another fetish mining question? Let's go back into that, shall we? One of the most freaky ones I ever got was actually fairly recent and it was this person who was emailing me asking me if I was interested in like auditioning to act in a show, which first of all, I don't act, I actually can't act at all. Um, but it was like for like some kind of like national show, it was like quite big. Um, and I'm always open for a media opportunity. Hello, I love to do things with my life. And it started off kind of like interesting, but it was all coming from like a Gmail account. And they're just like, hey, are you interested in like, in fact, let me find. It says, hey, Becky, my name is Sasha and we're currently in the process of casting for the next series of Plebs, a long running show about three 20 somethings living in ancient Rome. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the show or not. Let me know if you're not, I'll go into details about it. Season five is coming out later this year. So in the process of casting for a future series that will release next year, looking for a young, attractive woman to play a semi-regular role in the series. She'll play the love interest of one of the main characters. If this is something you might be interested in, let me know, and I can go into more details about the character or the show in general if you're not familiar with it, from Sasha. And this all came from a Gmail account. And I just said, can you send through some more info? I'm interested. And he said, hey, thanks for getting back to me. I'll, I'm glad to hear that you're interested. I think the best place to start is, are you familiar with the show? Have you watched it? It'll be a lot easier to explain the role if you are familiar with the show. And I said, no worries. I'm not familiar with it. Just give me some background. Um, also, let me know what company you're contacting me from on behalf of. I'm wary of Gmail addresses. Hope you can understand my concern. And they say, I just got my boss to email you from an official company email. Hope that puts your mind at ease. Um, I'll go into details about the show. I'll give you a general summary of what's happened so far. And then what we had in mind for you when we reached out. And so in this part, I get an email from somebody from all 3 media dot email. It says, hey Becky, my colleague Sasha reached out to you the other day about appearing in the next season of The Plebs on ITV. She says that you have some understandable worries about it coming from a Gmail account, so I thought we'd reach out from an official account to put your mind at ease. If you need anything else clearing up, let me know. So All 3 media is a legitimate company and they live at all 3 mediacom or .co.uk, I can't remember which one. So all 3 media dot email isn't any of that. And some large corporations do actually do their emails not off their company website email domain, if that makes sense. So like, I don't know, like say for example, like Procter Gamble or whatever, it wouldn't be from like PN PNG.com, it would be like PNG mail server dot email or like, you know, they'll, they'll have, they might set up a different domain name to do their emails off. But that doesn't make sense for all three media because you can use this website called hunter.io where you can track down, has anybody ever used an email address with this domain name before on the internet that's publicly searchable? And you can find that All3Media has actually got um, quite a few email addresses associated to all3media.com or .co.uk. Again, I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, and so with that in mind, it wouldn't make sense to me, especially for quite a, not small, but you know, not a multinational. They have no real reason to set up a separate domain name purely to run their emails off. So while they think this is alleviating my concerns, it's making me even more concerned. So anyway, I'm like, okay, this is getting interesting. Why have they emailed me off this like weird email domain? And then I try to do like a who is lookup and try and figure out um, who owns the like, all three media dot email and it's all blocked out. You can't see it. They've got a domain protection on it. So I can't even see who owns it, but I know that it was registered at the beginning of this year. So anyway, this person gives me a background about the show but I didn't reply to that one. And then they chased me. They're like, hey, Becky, you've never heard back from you. You're still interested. Let me know, I get the ball rolling. I said, I've been busy, I'm at work. Um, let's maybe have a call at some point. Let me know what the best number is and time to reach you from. Um, so, and then they're like, okay, cool. Sounds great. Do you have any thoughts or questions about the summary I gave you? Um, and I came at them with loads of questions. I was like, what's the name in the background of the character? What would the role entail? And then I was like, can you give me your Skype or your phone number and a time that I can call you tomorrow so we can have a chat about this? Then they reply. They answer a few of my questions. They say like, oh, the first three seasons are on Netflix. Um, the character is like this. And then it starts to basically, as, as if the fake email wasn't enough, it starts to like set off my alarm bells. So the character is called Minia, a beautiful but deadly German warrior princess who's in Rome fighting as a gladiatrix. I know other things that begin with a, or end with a something tricks. Apparently that's a female gladiator, but I'm not so sure. It would entail some fighting 
because of the gladiator thing, but we'd give you some stage combat training and you wouldn't be expected to do anything difficult. We do simulated sex scenes. The two actors get under a bed sheet and fake hump. It's hard to explain. You'll see if you watch the earlier seasons and maybe some semi nudity, occasionally a glimpse of a bare ass or naked leg. Again, you'll see what I mean in earlier seasons saying it's filmed in Bulgaria, pay for your travel accommodation, two weeks filming, that kind of stuff. And then they ask me questions like name, age, height, weight, shoe size, eye color, tattoos, allergies, dietary requirements, medication, anything like that. And then I've obviously not replied to any of this. And then did the role scare you off is another message I get. And then we do have one other project we're trying to cast for, but I'm not sure it'd be your kind of thing. And then as I never heard back from you, I'll assume you lost interest or some, in something and I'll be off. So, sorry to bother you, Sasha. So there's a few reasons why I stopped replying. For one, I was talking to my old housemate about it, Kelsey, and she actually was getting some similar messages from the same person. Um, and it was all the same stuff about like, oh, the characters get under a bake sh bed sheet and hump and all this kind of stuff. And it's just like the way that they describe it is not very professional. The approach they took with me was not very professional. Um, the fake email thing really weirded me out. The fact that I asked for a phone number and they didn't give me one was a really big red flag because in any of this, it's way easier to do this kind of stuff over the phone. Um, the fact they would not have a call with me when I asked them more than once. When I did some more snooping, I actually found on Reddit, another girl had posted about being approached by this. Um, being cast in this show. A few of my other like acting YouTube friends, I think Hannah also got approached about this and was also approached about this from the same people, but about a women's prison show and like asked all sorts of questions about like, what would your last meal be on death row and all these kinds of like, you know, have you ever like watched somebody die? Like all this kind of stuff is like research. And it's like, it started getting really weird, really fast. Obviously with that kind of stuff, it's best to just step away because it's clear that they were not affiliated with the show in any way. And that makes it a lot worse because then you wonder, well, you know, who was it? Who was behind this? And what did they want? One of life's great mysteries. Another weird fetish mining experience I've had, which is actually even more terrifying. And I've actually shared this with you guys before on my other channel ages ago. I was telling you about weird emails that I'd gotten over my life and one of the weird emails was this person saying, hey, can I draw you? And I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. You don't have to ask. Thank you very much. That's really nice of you to, you know, do that, whatever. You're artistically talented. Great. And then they were like, you need to recreate this video for me. And it was a video where basically the girl would, um, it was like an artist reference photo or something. And the girl would turn her head to the side and then to the center and then to the other side and then to the center and then tilt her head all the way back and show all of her neck and then tilt her head all the way forward and show all the top of her hair and then turn all the way around. And I thought that the video, like it just, the video just gave me a bit of the creeps because it was just a bit like quiet and slow and like strange and I was like, I've been drawn by people before and they've never needed me to make this and I'm not going to go out of my way and make this weird video for you. Like, I don't want you to draw me that much. So if you can't use any of the photos or something on my social media, then I actually am not that desperate for you to draw me. This is more for you than it is for me. I don't, I'm not really asking you for this. So um, I just left it at that. And then obviously they emailed again a few months later. They're like, hey, can I draw you? I was like, yes, again, you don't need to ask. Just go ahead and do it if you want to do it. And then they sent me that same reference video again to copy. And I was like, hmm. No, I left it. Talked about it on my video. That was that. A friend got in touch with me and said, hey, Becky, I saw that video. One thing really sprung to mind about that. And this is before that whole Shane Dawson thing, by the way. Um, they said deep fakes. And I was like, I've heard that before. What does that mean? Deep fakes are essentially where you can use some software that I believe is open source. Anybody can use it, it's free, it's available. That will use any source material. The really famous one is the Obama video where they produced a video of Obama basically warning the world about the threats of the internet and like, you know, cyber warfare. And then it was revealed that actually Obama never said that. It's not him in the video. It is in fact thousands and thousands of source material frames from all of his speeches put into this one neural network and then churning out a video to match audio, which is fed in by a voice impersonator. And therefore there was this moving, speaking, talking, living, breathing, Obama in a video saying these things that he had never actually said, but it looked uncannily real. And obviously this kind of stuff can be used um, most proficiently actually for making like fake porn of people. I think that there's a lot of like famous celebrities, for example, like Selena Gomez, I think Shane Dawson talked about this in one of his 
conspiracy documentaries. He talks about it a lot more in depth, which I really recommend you go and see just exactly how powerful this software is and how deep faking um, is such a wide phenomenon on like the kind of lower layers of the internet. And it does make you think that a reference video which turns your head one side to the center, to the other side to the center, all the way back to the center, all the way down and turn all the way around, wouldn't that be perfect to just put into, that would be the ultimate source material to put into like a deep faking um, algorithm and then basically put my face on anything you want. I'm not saying I'm big and or important enough to, you know, warrant that any of that kind of stuff. And I definitely never want to be, but I know there's a lot of weird people on the internet. And again, that's a form of fetish mining, isn't it? Now, if you're interested in this topic of like fetish mining, um, I would really recommend you watch the documentary by David Farrier called Tickled. It is, I think it's my favorite documentary of all time. It is absolutely fantastic. It's an hour and a half long. It's like a film length, feature length documentary. Um, it reminds me a little bit of like Catfish in that way as well, in terms of like his internet like conspiracies and stuff, and, like going on like a journey and like finding out way more than you ever expected that you'd find out about certain things. Um, and he basically is looking into this online world of competitive tickling, which isn't a sport, that's not a real thing. All these videos are so well produced, they're all about like, you know, competitive tickling with like a timer and like a judge and like a stopwatch and all these like boys in like, you know, sports uniforms that's like tickling each other until they can't stand it anymore. Tickling is obviously like a really big like fetish, I think, in like the fetish community. And so it was kind of like, this is so strange that this these videos are being produced but like it's trying to distance itself really far from actually being on the nose a fetish thing and so this journalist like tries to figure out more about it and then he instantly gets like shut down and he's like how dare you ask us if this is you know you've got like such uh salacious intentions by asking us this we are in no way affiliated with anything like untowards and you better like question yourself and it, it just goes from there and it's like all this big conspiracy about like power media who's behind this blackmail is terrifying and so it doesn't talk about fetish mining in a meta sense but it is a huge big example of somebody getting fetish mined. Now this video is kind of long but I hope it was really interesting for you and obviously I'm going to make more videos about magazines and all sorts of other things but I did want to touch on culture and big topics on this channel because it's something that I'm really passionate about. This spent all my life thinking about this kind of stuff and feel like we can have better discussions if we talk about it all together. I'd be really interested to know if any of you have experience this or after hearing all these stories are making you second guess an interaction that you had with somebody. Do you share the same feeling that I do in that it's really bad purely because it is trying to get somebody to participate in your fetish without them actually knowing that they are doing so? Because that's the biggest problem that I have with it, is me being unwittingly a part of something which is gratifying to you. It is ex That is exploiting me and I don't even have any knowledge of it. I just remind you to always be super savvy, maybe have this conversation with your younger siblings because I know that they are often a huge target for this kind of stuff. Just get them to second guess messages. And finally, I would really just remind you, no matter how big or small you are on the internet in terms of follower size, you don't owe anybody a response. It is completely fine to ignore people, mute people, block people, not interact with them. You can reply to your friends and that's fine. And you probably would expect to, you know, owe them a response. But complete strangers asking you weird questions, you don't even have to say no thank you because even that might get them off. <laughs> not that you can think in that way, obviously, about what's gonna sort people out or not. But, you know, any kind of interaction with these kinds of people at all are totally not obligated by you and you don't owe them a thing and never feel guilty or bad about leaving them hanging. If you hate seeing that message that's not been responded to in your inbox, delete the thread, you know, screenshot maybe if you need to, but delete the thread and just don't think about it. You don't owe them a response, you shouldn't respond. And I hope that if ever you have been the person who is trying to fetish mine and you know that your intentions are not so pure, please reconsider what you're doing um, because it's really, it's just not cool. I think participate in whatever you're interested in with consenting participants rather than the unwitting. That's all for me. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you subscribe, turn on the notifications if you don't mind because the YouTube algorithm's got all sorts going on. Um, I'll post some blanked out screenshots um, on my newsletter actually if you would like to go on down, subscribe to my newsletter. You'll hear about all my new videos whenever they come out and also get some secret little downloadable bits um, that are exclusively for you over there as well. 
I'd love to have a big convo about this, so do leave your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for making my new channel dreams bigger than I ever thought. When I made this channel, I thought I would, I would get like, what, like 100 subscribers in like a month and a half's time. To have almost 500 in the first week is absolutely more <sighs> encouraging than I ever thought it would be. I really wasn't expecting any of you to welcome me back with such warm and big arms, but I'm really grateful. And I've answered a few questions about why I started this channel in the first place on my Instagram stories. If you look in the highlights under Ginger, you'll find it there. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye. <laughs>